Welcome back to the comic book ASM artist. Today we're going to be looking at this uh, art book that a viewer actually told me about. This is DC Comics, The Art of Darwin Cook. Now you can find this on Amazon for around $25. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go through it and I'll share just kind of an overview of the book. So... Um, like I said, I didn't know about this book. I did know about Darwin Cook. I haven't seen much of his stuff. So this book is actually really good, um, introduction-wise, Tom, if you've never, uh, seen his stuff, especially a lot of the more obscure stuff is really spotlighted here. I don't think a lot of it has been reprinted in other places, which is why it's kind of all here. Um, so we get our table of contents over here that I actually printed a secondary copy of because even though uh, some of the um, pages for the covers will say which issues they're for, a lot of the actual comic excerpts that are shown don't have that runner on it, so uh, I'm not sure what quite a few of them are. So right here we see uh, an original page by him. This was actually... Um, the first work he did for DC Comics here. And it was just a little short story. And it's shown right here. Uh, I think it was just called The Private Eye. And this was a tribute um, to a previous story, I believe. But if you'll notice, everything here, it's all very sequential. With not much in the way of dialogue. So, and if you know Darwin's style, like he's very good at telling sequential elements in the story. Uh, I am noticing the style is very different than kind of where he landed later in life. Uh, so that was kind of surprising. A side note with it, I think this was printed in 1985, if I remember something like that. So he auditioned and he got accepted and they put his stuff in the showcase, I believe, if I remember and um but the pay wasn't great basically it took him about a week to do each page and the page rate at the time was like 35 dollars a page so even though he really loved the sequential medium um he wasn't able to say it it was viable because the pay wasn't very good for the um work he was putting in for each page for one week so he switched to like advertising and marketing and later kind of circled back uh, to comics. So right here, this is a little Superman Adventures from the cartoon short story here. You see the cover here for Batman Ego. They have changed it since, but that is the original cover for it. And Ego was just kind of his first... Um, full-length comic I guess he had done it was kind of a prestige format I forget what year he had done it in but the unique thing about Ego is that it um, actually served when I was telling you about his animating and stuff like that uh, there was an open spot to work on Batman the animated series and so the first 18 pages of Batman Ego uh, he turned in as his job um, response to the posting and so with the help of those 18 pages he had uh, it helped him land the gig to work on storyboarding for Batman animated so which I actually just read Ego yesterday I still need to buy the physical copy of it but um yeah I was surprised it definitely had some some darker moments there's like a suicide in there and stuff someone shoots themselves in the head like right in front of Batman and the blood splatters on him a little bit and stuff like that and um so it's but you know it's one of those things like batman animated has always just kind of been a more sophisticated story telling um elements to it anyway so i think it's interesting that you know he had that uh, very dark story you know but told through kind of i'd say he's about a uh, a mid between Bruce Tim style, so still pretty stylized, but um, definitely his own take as well. 
So next we see here, this is, looks like it's more of a Wild West type thing here. So this is weird Western tales. I think this story here is probably in correlation with this cover. Let me look. So, a change of climate from Legion Worlds. So, yeah, I don't know what Legion Worlds is, but yeah. Um, if you'll notice, too, this style, this isn't a bit... Uh, inked as heavy as he normally is. As you can see, yeah, see, there's not a lot of like thin or thicker line weights, rather. And even like the coloring palette and stuff is not uh, typically how you see his work presented here. And then I remember this here. This is the Batman Beyond number four. Uh, cover here with Etrican, which I think he probably helped design Etrican for the um, for the new Batman Adventures, or I forget the name of the actual WB iteration. But I remember I did have that cover for sure. And then we see some more of the Batman Beyond covers here, number twenty-three there with the Royal Flush Gang. We got twenty-four. And yeah, that's the thing too with Batman uh, Beyond. He actually did the opening sequence was all fully animated by Darwin Cook. Um, and he did the opening first fully animated and then they put music to it, which is actually the reverse of how they normally do TV theme songs. Normally the people will have the music and then respond in turn with an animation. But he actually made... Uh, the full thing on like his Apple that he had at home, his computer he had at home. So it wasn't even on like a studio, he just did it. And we have this Human Values, this was in the 9-11 tribute they did, uh, with all the terrorist attack stuff. And we have here, this is a story, it's called Here Be Monsters, this was in a, black, a Batman black and white. Uh, volume here and this kind of lends to the more earlier days of Batman with the bigger ear points in here and then of course it's all black and white so it's very much in the vein of like you know serialized noir and then this is a Catwoman story here Selena's big score And then, as I was telling you before, um, he helped redesign Catwoman's look for DC Comics. So he gave her, like, the leather biker jumpsuit sort of look with the, the goggles and everything like this. And this was really what the new the Batman films uh, Catwoman was inspired by. So, yeah, this is just a relaunch Catwoman number one. This was in 2002. And just kind of continuing on. I think it was just a four-part thing he had done. And what's funny here, this issue of uh, Gotham Adventures number 45, this was actually the last issue of um, Batman Adventures I personally bought because I didn't care for the way the story had gone. Uh, basically, I think the end result was like, oh, the the cook at Arkham had freed all the inmates, and I really just hated that ending for some reason. So, just kind of funny that, you know, even though this was a Darwin Cook cover, I don't think he did the interiors, but I remember being so ticked off with how this book ended that um, I stopped buying it at that point. But I think it only ran to 60 issues anyway, so. I really like this one. This isn't really a the type of style you see him normally do. This is issue number uh, 50 there. And you can see it's kind of like a painted sort of look. If you can see kind of like the textures on the moon there. I don't know if he actually like did that on a canvas or if that was like a mock filter they put on it. But it's really cool. I know that. So, page 44 here, let me look. Um, so this is, this is from the Stanley Just Imagine Creating the Marvel or DC Universe 
Um, this was the recreation of Catwoman. So yeah, they did a whole series where Stan Lee did like his origin stories for different DC characters and they were all pretty different. And so he had done this one here. And this is Justice League Adventures number seven cover there. And then we're followed up with the Looney Tunes story. So yeah, that's the thing. Darwin was um, pretty diverse in the things that he could um, do with his art. I mean, this is very on model. But uh, I think he just liked trying different things and doing different things. So next we have a Dr. Fate story here. And I think most of this book is actually arranged chronologically, so it's kind of great just seeing uh, the whole scope of his DC track. Granted, like the, like, the big stories he did aren't in here, but they do show covers for those. But uh, as I've said, this is just really good as an overview to kind of um, see stuff in general. So he's speaking which of the new frontier. This is issue number one's cover. And I don't know if this is one of the variant covers, maybe, or I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, he did these great, like, designed images for it as well. And so, yeah, The New Frontier was a story about basically, like, the forming of the Justice League way back in the day. I remember there's, like, elements where it's, like, during the World War and stuff like that, and... Just really well done. Everyone is drawn in that classic style, but there's a lot of mature elements to the story. So even though, you know, they look visually very much in the vein of kind of like cartoon universe models, um, the story itself is very visceral in moments, very dark. I remember it was one of the first um, more mature DC um, video cartoons that they had done, like their little movie. But uh, if I remember reading, they actually changed a, quite a bit of the focal point. He originally had uh, the female characters have a very strong focus, and they shifted away from that, and he wasn't too thrilled by that. So yeah, see, here's another design one too, and so he can kind of see like different color outlines around this here, and and then here, there's like no outline on the hair and stuff. So we always try to do these kind of unique, interesting sort of things. If he had the space to do it, so. Highly recommend it. It's been a while. It's been since college, since I've read it. Um, I do have them next to me here as well. So I might show a bit of them off towards the end of the video. Just to kind of give you a taste. Like a super fast flip through sort of thing. But yeah, this is, you can see everything is very traditional here in the way that it's uh, depicted. We got the black on the Superman logo. And then this was whenever they did uh, the collections, they did like some bonus material. So this was kind of like a little short story uh, that they threw in there. And this collection did come out, like the, this art book I'm holding, it came out after he had passed away. Um, so it is complete in showing all of his DC stuff that he had done. So it's really just kind of nice to get a full overview of his time at DC. This image right here. So yeah, this here we can see, yeah, there's very little in the way of like outside outline. So this is called Bad Girls. I've never even read this here. It's 
Phantom quarterback. This is Solo number five. Um, so Solo was a series DC put out that spotlight different artists in each issue. And so I think the following pages here showcase um, Darwin stuff within that. So it's a collection of short stories done uh, in different styles. And then here we see like more like pencil texture and stuff like that. So just kind of once again a space for Darwin to come in and uh, do things you wouldn't typically see uh, within a comic book space. And then here we can kind of see like this is more of like how you would draw in fashion with you know the I don't know if this is watercolor here or what they used but it's very quick and sketchy in the manner that it's done. But once again, just kind of something interesting and different. And then, yeah, this is very much in a traditional kind of style here. Very much pinup style there. Everyday Madness. Not sure what this is from either. another Batman story here. This is called Deja Vu. And I have not read this book in full yet either. The main thing I did was uh, do some homework to give you those tidbits I gave you about his history. Um, because unfortunately there's not a lot in the way of that in this book which uh, I kind of miss. I know I've shown a few in my hauls. I'd like to do the full series of the uh, comic Modern Masters um, book collection. They had one on the works for Darwin Cook, but it, would, it never got published. I think they actually even skipped the number on the spines. If there are spines on the number, I don't remember. But um, So there was one on the works, and it just never got put out for whatever reason. So... Uh, and those are a lot more comprehensive with interviews and personal stories and stuff like that. So here we have a, a Green Lantern story called Flight. And Dave Stewart did the coloring. He's known for mainly being the colorist for the Hellboy books and stuff like that. He's done a ton of different work. And I think he switches coloring techniques here. Yeah, he sure does. Right here, it goes into more of that flat style. And so I was surprised he kind of had the more 3D look here, although they are coming at you, so maybe that's the reason why uh, he made those choices there. But I think Darwin's style is much better suited for kind of the simpler flats than the you know, rendered computer coloring look. And then I think it switches artists here. Here we see Batman in the spirit. And then next is there's just a ton of spirit work. Lots of covers. And then I think he actually did the interiors for the spirit too. I think they're probably collected in their own um, works. I haven't read a lot of the spirit, so I don't know a ton about him. I know he's just kind of one of those old school classic heroes. But I don't know much about him. 
and we have a nice little Rocketeer cover here. So that's exciting to me. As you guys know, I love the Rocketeer. And we have a American Splendor cover here. And I'm assuming this was a short story in that same issue. And then we have some Jonah Hex work here. And I think a lot of this coming up here is Jonah Hex related. I don't know if this one in particular is. It might be, yeah. So, yeah, once again, I haven't read a lot of Jonah Hex either. Um, I was introduced to him through those, through the Batman animated episode. They kind of did like, this is Ra's al Ghul on a train back in the, I think it was 1800s. And so that was my initial exposure, exposure to that character. So, yeah, as you can tell, Darwin's very good at Wild West storytelling as well. And as you can see, once again, the line weights are thinner in a lot of spots. I think this is a Sergeant Rock cover, maybe. Armistice Night. So we see like some like skeleton zombie type stuff going on there. Followed up with an eye zombie cover, fittingly. It's a flash cover, number seven. Uh, Thunder Agents, number one. Another Batman Beyond, this is issue number one when the series relaunched in 2011. Laws of Motion. Not sure where this fits in, but it's very much a science fiction space story there. Uh, JSA number 50. And once again, in the more traditional aesthetic there the shade and then this is a very designer cover here times past some of the before Watchmen titles. This is the Minutemen. I remember I did read those, but it, it's been a while. These are the covers. And this is a Batwing cover, number 24 and number 26. Number 27, Justice League 33. So that's a little bit newer take on them. Still kind of traditional though. Another Jonah Hex cover here, All-Star Western, number 28 and 29. 34, and then another story here. And I think in this one, Jonah is not quite as disfigured as he previously has been. Not sure the premise behind that. The 
final curtain. So I guess that was the very last issue. Star Spangled War Stories number one cover there. There's two and three. Four and five as well. So yeah, a lot uh, more bloody and violent. Number six, and that was probably the last issue maybe. And we see another story here. I think this is the Harley Quinn one. This is the last um, sequential story he did, I believe. This is Killing Time by uh, Amanda Connor and Jimmy Pal Palmiotti wrote it. And he drew it. And this is done in her, her later look. Ambush bug here. Number six. And then you had even collects all of the um, wide shot covers he had done here. I can't read uh, quite a bit of them from this distance, unfortunately, but yeah, it collects the whole set of them. So if you're trying to hunt down all these covers, just so you can have the full visual. trying to hunt down these covers um, they're all collected here so that's really nice some green lanterns there oh, nice masters of the universe one I didn't expect to see that in there. And then we see Superman fighting the Joker there. <laughs> more covers gods and monsters number one uh, and then there's a series of one shots maybe because that's superman batman wonder woman and there's a green lantern 47 bizarro number four apparently is the day on the cover a nice tribute to frank miller there and then the collection of the trade paperbacks for the golden years for different omnibus here. Superman's one and two, three and four. I think these were on the backs maybe if I remember, I'm, I can't recall. And same thing, Wonder Woman's Golden Ages. And there's the Batman ones. Supergirl. We got Justice League, Teen Titans, Flash, Green Lantern. We got uh, World's Finest, um, Adam Strange. And then this is the I guess original cover for when they first printed this maybe because it says graphic ink DC Comics Art of Darwin Cook this was in 2015 so this one I think came out in 2016 maybe let's see yeah he died May 2016 at age 53 I think he had a battle with cancer if I remember not exactly sure unfortunately there's the back cover there. Now I will show you a brief look at the um, at the New Frontier ones. I'll just do a super quick 
So yeah, we see those covers in here that I showed you already before. And the page quality here is kind of a in-between, um, like magazine and newsprint. And yeah, there's little bits like this where they show like duotone. There's all sorts of fun design choices in here. So they're watching a movie here. And there's stuff with like clansmen in here and things and just kind of something you don't see in the modern era that's just kind of interesting to see the heroes interact and respond in that space to, you know. But his main goal when he was doing his work was to just make make the stories be heroic. This is a nice image here. And he succeeds with that, even though there are some dark elements to it. Uh, you walk away from these feeling very inspired. I thought I saw bugs in there. And Groucho. Uh, so this is the Martian Manhunter watching television and shape-shifting there. See, and here's another very newsprint quality there. So that's the first one. And here's the next one. So yeah, I had no clue about this series or story, I guess. I mean, it was, you know, floppies before they were uh, compiled, but I'm really glad that my friend shared this with me in college because I would have had no clue for a while at least. This is definitely uh, a modern classic for DC. That is, should definitely be on your read list if you haven't read it. Aquaman image there. See traditional Robin there. This Green Lantern. The original passing of the ring there it looks like. And this is more of like a brushwork style here. But uh, yeah, just great stuff. So if you haven't read Darwin's Darwin Cook stuff, I re highly recommend it. it uh, it's unfortunate, you know, he's no longer with us, but I'm certainly thankful for the things that he was able to give us. So uh, let me know down below if there's another art book y'all want me to check out. Um, like I said, I didn't know about this one. There's probably plenty more I don't know about too. So let me know about that. Let me know what you thought of the art of Darwin Cook in this video. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell so you know when we do live streams and all that good stuff. And uh, you all have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.